Hello, my name is Martin. It was a sunny day in June. Me and my friends were visiting a local park where there was a very big house and a beautiful garden. The house was open up for visitors to look around and there was a shop and even a restaurant. I am a huge fan of mazes, but was never in one in real life. I just did them in books and comics or wherever I came across one. The main reason I wanted to visit this park house was because I knew there was a maze there. When me and my friends arrived at the maze, I was so excited, but I felt that excitement drain away when my friends said they weren't going in because they heard a story that one time a boy or age went in there and was never seen again. I told them that it was just a silly urban legend that wasn't true, but they were adamant they weren't going in. I could see the fear in their eyes, and I couldn't understand why. I told them, okay, if you want to spoil the party, that's okay, but I'm going in and enjoying the maze. Besides, if anyone was going missing in there, don't you think we would have heard of a lot more people going missing? I walked in and was amazed at how high the ditches were. I could feel the excitement overcome me. I felt that my friends were missing out so much, but suddenly after a half an hour walking around there, I felt for the first time a pang of fear, and a few minutes after that, I wish I hadn't gone in. I shouted out loud to my friends, but all I could hear was the echo of my voice fill the air. I suddenly got the weirdest feeling someone was watching me. I panicked thinking it was the boy who vanished, who my friends were telling me about. I walked around and around and around, I had enough of the maze now, I wanted to get to the exit to get out of it. Suddenly I heard some shouting, and to my relief I realised it was my friend Sarah. When I got out of the maze, I acted like I wasn't afraid and said, that maze is so cool, I was walking around for hours it seemed like, and I genuinely couldn't find my way out. They must have designed this maze so well. That night I was in my room, but that was when the weirdest thing had happened. I walked out of my room, and when I walked into, which should have been my hall, I was in my room again. I suddenly saw a door in another direction, and once again when I entered it, I was in my room. This kept happening over and over and over. I could not make any sense of it, because I could look back and see my room, and turn around and look in the door and see my room again. I was panicking, thinking of the maze, knowing what was happening to me in there is happening to me right now, in my own bedroom. Suddenly I fell over something, when I was going through the door. It was a book. I picked it up, and the title read, The Maze. I opened it up and read, the first page, and a shiver ran up my spine. The publishing date was 2020, and the year at the time was 2010. I looked at the writer's name, and it was my best friend Sarah. Then I read, Ten years ago, my friend entered a maze that me and my friend warned him about, and he never was seen again. We had warned him of exactly the same thing happening another boy, years ago, who we cannot find out who it is. I stopped reading, then jumped when I heard a voice behind me. I turned around. My dad was staring right in front of me and said, Son, don't be afraid. That maze gave you a secret magic that will make up for any friends you may never have seen again. You will understand as time goes on. I know, trust me, I was that other boy that went missing.
Hi, this is Kate Valentine. I'm responding about the request you put on the police auction materials. I bought a few kids' books from that auction. Actually, a whole crate of them. At the time, I didn't look at them. I just put them on the bargain shelf in order of the author's names. I had never heard of the author or the book title, so I gave them all orange stickers, which meant 50 cents each. One day, it was particularly dead, so... I paged through them, and I noticed this one with very simple, minimalistic drawings called Dave's Days. There was no cohesive story. Unlike other children's books that use each page as a part of a lesson, here there was none of that. One page was the Dave character sitting at a kitchen table with a mug in front of him. He was the kind of stick figure you see on bathroom doors. Dave's kitchen was written in block letters above him. The whole book was like that. Just Dave, sitting alone in one setting or another. The park. The library. I put the book away and looked through the others and found another one in the Dave series. This one was called Dave and His Friends. The cover was Dave outside his house, like the first, but next to him stood a little girl with a blonde ponytail. Two boys and a girl, all brown-haired with freckles, looked out from the window inside the house. This book was all about Dave and these kids doing things together and going places like to the park and getting ice cream. Every time Dave did something nice for them, they'd say, Dave is my, Dave friend. Is my friend. But since no one has a mouth, and therefore no one is smiling, it only makes the whole thing odd, like when you read a happy text message without an exclamation mark. I put the book away. Later that night, I decided to Google the titles of the books. When I got nothing, I just Googled the things in the book, and eventually I Googled the phrase, Dave is my friend. An article came up. It was about a girl named Jennifer Holland who had gone missing sometime earlier and about how her parents hadn't given up hope. It also alluded to police being suspicious of them as the circumstances of her disappearance were strange. They said they woke up to find their front door open and Jennifer gone. Two things really struck me from the article. The first was that the last name Holland seemed significant. I couldn't remember why until I went back to the Dave books and saw that Dave lived in Holland Town. The second thing, I'll get to that in a sec. After hours of searching for more information, I stumbled across a forum. I don't remember where, maybe on Reddit, but one subject said, Has anyone read Dave and the Others? It was a guy with the handle Oregon Ollie who had found an eerily similar book. The post was two years old. Later, I searched for Oregon Ollie, but his account was inactive. When he googled the book, he didn't find anything either. But, like me, he started googling everything in the book and found a news story, just like I had. Three siblings had been found dead at Chippewyan Lake in Canada. They lay on the shore, holding hands. Their last name was Robin. They died from exposure. Mr. and Mrs. Robin woke up in the middle of the night by a cold wind the night their kids went missing. The door had been left wide open. It was January. The police found a note at the Robin home left by the kids, but the article said the investigators would not release the contents to the public. Oregon Ali said that, in his book, there were three red robins that would fly over Dave's head when he got sad. The book was mostly a man, walking the city sidewalks at night, or sitting at a park bench alone with the stars over him. Whenever Dave seemed sad, the robins would come and fly over his head, and he would just look up and watch. The second thing that I mentioned earlier that struck me in the first article I read was that Jennifer Holland had drawn a picture before she went missing. It was of a stick figure man and herself, 
Her parents didn't know what it was. She had written, Dave is my friend on it. I don't have the books anymore. I went back through them after reading Oregon Ollie's account, and seeing those three kids in the window of Dave's house freaked me out, so I threw them away. I still think about it, though. Sometimes I wish I kept them, but the thought of having them near me gives me the chills. I wasn't going to mention this, but after I read the Reddit account, I wrote my own post about it. No one ever picked up on it, but right after that, I started getting phone calls. When I answered, I would hear some electrical buzzing, but that was it. First, the calls were just at my house, but then I got them on my cell and even at work. Slowly, it died down, but I still get them from time to time. The last thought that crosses my mind when I lock my doors at night is, I wonder if it's Dave calling me. And I wonder if he's there somewhere, watching my house when I go to bed. Sometimes I move my bureau in front of the door just to be safe. Hi, my name is Siobhan. I was really stressed lately and needed a break away, so decided to pack up work for a week and book myself into a lovely looking hotel in a really nice resort in Florida. Judging by the photos online of it, the place was exactly what I needed. I just needed to get away from everything for a few days, so hopefully a week would do the job. When I had all my luggage packed, I got the cab to the airport and was on my way to Florida. I was so happy knowing I would spend the next week away from all the stress of everything that was going on lately. I was very confident I would feel so much better after the break. When I arrived, I checked in and got the elevator up to my room left my baggage and headed straight for the beach. It was so relaxing just lying down on the beach, with the air blowing in my face. I felt like I was just about to feel the benefits of what I'd feel spending a whole week in this beautiful resort. That night I was in the hotel spa, and I was feeling kind of fed up, thinking that in a week I'd be back to my ordinary life and the troubles and stress will be waiting right for me. But I knew I just had to make the most of being here. Suddenly a guy walked up to me in the bar and said to me, Hello, I'm very sorry to interrupt you, but I just saw you sitting there and you looked kind of lonely and a bit fed up to be honest. And I was wondering, would you like some company? I looked strangely at first wondering, did I really look that fed up? And then I replied, Well, sure, thanks. I guess I'd enjoy some company. The man asked, So, where are you from? I told him I was from New York and decided I needed to have a break away from the stress in the Big Apple. He smiled and said, Do you know something? That makes a lot of sense to me. And trust me, this place is like a paradise. If you like, I can show you around sometime. I smiled and said, sure, that sounds like fun. Then the man said, oh, by the way, pardon my manners. I didn't even ask your name. My name is Sam, what's yours? My name is Siobhan, nice to meet you, Sam. The next day, I was relaxing on the beach with Sam. He spoke, to be honest, when I saw you alone and looking kind of down, I had to come and say hello. I looked confused and asked him why. He replied, A few weeks ago there was this beautiful girl who was sitting by herself in the bar, just like you were, and well, she looked to be upset over something. I was going to introduce myself and ask her would she like company, 
but I didn't. And well, the next day I found out she was after committing suicide by jumping off her room's balcony. I felt so sorry for the girl and told Sam that there was no way of him knowing she was so upset and was going to commit suicide. That night me and Sam were in the bar having a few drinks and speaking. I wondered would it be too soon. When we were in my room, we sat on the bed and had another drink. Sam stood up and said to me, Do you know what I love most about this hotel? The beautiful view from the balcony. We both walked out to the balcony and were admiring the view. I said to him, It's beautiful. Suddenly Sam put his hand on my back and was about to push me over when I took my taser out of my pocket and tasered him. He jumped back, feeling surprised I was ready for him. Then I said, That girl you were telling me committed suicide. We both know that she didn't jump. Then I held my phone up and showed him a picture that was taken of him without his knowledge, with text underneath it saying, Help, call the police, this man is going to kill me. I called the hotel and asked for my friend Lisa, who you pushed, but when they had sadly confirmed to me she had committed suicide, then I had an expert in facial recognition do a background check on you, and boy was I happy to know that you were working in this hotel. I knew the police would let you off, so I have my own idea of justice. Also, thanks so much for letting me know what type of lunatic you are by wanting to push me off the balcony also. But I'd just like to know why. Why would you want to kill an innocent woman after just killing an innocent woman just a few weeks ago? With that, the door was knocked open and I heard police shout, Stop! Police! They walked over to me and they couldn't even see the damn man lying on the ground. I was cursing this hotel's CCTV footage for picking up my face and letting them finally see me when they were looking for me for months. And I was wondering why, because I knew I was on the run, but didn't know why. It was months later I had learned. There was no man. I suffer from a condition called disassociative disorder, which means I was the man, but there was never a man, and it was me who killed my friend. <laughs>